Got fingers, play PC games? Your desktop keyboard is the most important weapon in your PC gaming arsenal. Land your hands on the right one with our advice and deep dive reviews. Don't expect any blatant gaming theme stylistic flourishes with the G610. This keyboard is built to look utilitarian, with a rectangular shape and few extra features or controls, it doesn't even have a USB hub. This doesn't mean the keyboard has no extras, they're just hidden from casual glances. The keys are all backlit by dimmable white LEDs, and when they aren't on the keys look completely normal. A set of playback controls, along with game, light, and mute buttons, sit on the upper right corner of the keyboard as flat, circular buttons that don't stand out. A wide volume will rest just above the playback controls, offering easy volume adjustment with a flick of the thumb. The wheel is so simple and accessible that I wish it could be programmed to perform other functions, too, I would have loved to see a toggle switch to let it work like a mouse scroll wheel. The keyboards completely lack any sort of wrist rest, but you get three height adjustments. A nested set of two pairs of flip-out feet on the back of each G610 can lift it up 4 or 8 degrees, depending on your tastes. The G610's lights might be white rather than multicolored, but you can still make some fun customizations to them through Logitech's software, just as you can with the Logitech G910. While you can't change the colors, you can choose between various lighting effects like a slow wave of light across the keys, random star-like twinkling, and lighting individual keys and zones. You can also synchronize the lighting patterns with other Logitech G series devices, like mice and headsets. The Strix Scope TKL cuts the standard 104 key layout down to a more manageable 84 keys by dropping the number pad in the top row of system keys. That lets it shave down its frame to 1.63 by 14 by 5.3 inches and 1.8 pounds, which is enough to let players reap the benefits of having a smaller keyboard but isn't going to win any awards for efficiency, either. Despite the fact that it has a detachable, braided USB Type-C cable-minded compact keyboards, its size and shape aren't as well suited to frequent travel as the designs of other TKL keyboards. The small sacrifices in size and weight are concessions to the Strix Scope's strong sense of style. Like most gear in Asus Republic of Gamers line, the Scope has a loud look, full of color and contrast. The aluminum top plate has sharp, angled edges, and the black keycaps are bathed in RGB light. I was sent the Electro Punk Edition, a color variant that looks even more amped up with a mix of black and pink keys. The ordinary version has straight black keycaps. Across the tapered bottom edge of the keyboard, an RGB bar illuminates your desk, creating a strong underglow effect. I would say it's worth that extra quarter of an inch of desk space if you like how it looks. Unlike the Ornata Chroma, it has 11 discrete media keys, sparing you the burden of holding down the FN key every time you want to pause your music. Positioned above the function keys rather than being layered over top of them, these can be used to control your background music, toggle your microphone, and even modify the lighting. Along its left side, are five macro keys that can be assigned to any function or combination of functions you can imagine. On the far right, there's a full-size number pad. Unfortunately, all those keys make the Horde AMO a bit larger than average. With its included plastic wrist rest attached, it measures 1.22 by 21 by 9 inches. By comparison, the Razer Ornata Chroma measures 1.2 by 18.2 by 6.1 inches, and the Logitech G213 Prodigy is 1.3 by 17.8 by 8.6 inches, including its integrated wrist rest. As we found out while using the keyboard during lunch, the Horde Amos included plastic wrist rest is highly susceptible to fingerprints and smudges. It's also not particularly comfortable, especially compared with the Razer Ornata Chroma's cushion wrist rest. The Horde Amo can be raised about half an inch using a pair of plastic feet located beneath its shoulders. Like the Ornata Chroma and G213 Prodigy, it lacks support for USB pass-through, a function typically found on purebred mechanical keyboards. The keys are backlit, but it's so subtle that in a well-lighted room, you'll have to crank up the brightness to notice. If you're familiar with Razer's recent Huntsman Elite keyboard, you've already seen the Black Widow Elite's basic design. The plain black plastic chassis is nothing special, but the elegant, elevated keycaps reflect subtle backlighting back onto the keyboard surface. Off on the left side, you've got a USB pass-through and a 3.5mm audio cable pass-through. In the upper right, you'll find discrete media controls, with aesthetically pleasing circular buttons, and a ridge dial that you can use to control either the volume or the lighting levels. 
At 17.5 by 6.5 inches, the Black Widow Elite isn't the smallest full-size keyboard out there, but you should have no trouble fitting it on a standard desk. Some users may miss the row of dedicated macro keys, but it's easy enough to reprogram the top row of function buttons to the same effect. One major difference between the Black Widow Elite and the Huntsman Elite is that the Black Widow comes with a standard wrist rest instead of the over-designed model with integrated LED lighting. Not only does this look a little less silly, but more important, it frees up a USB slot for pass-through. The wrist rest is comfortable, durable and magnetic, but it's easy to eschew if desk space is at a premium. One of our biggest pet peeves when it comes to gaming keyboards in general is just how big they can get. You'll constantly find these huge, foreboding slabs of plastic jutting out of the sides of a lot of keyboards. Luckily, the SteelSeries Apex Pro avoids this trend. The aluminum frame of this laptop is just big enough to house it, without too much excess. There is no space wasted on the sides, as the Apex Pro virtually ends where the keys stop. This minimalist design wins at big points as far as we're concerned. In fact, if it wasn't for the wrist rest, this keyboard would take up about as much space as your standard office keyboard. We wouldn't advise removing the wrist rest, however, as it's covered in a soft faux rubber material that is incredibly comfortable. The wrist rest is usually something we abandon right away, but we're still using it with the Apex Pro. The keycaps are elevated above the keyboard deck, giving the keyboard a very modern and clean aesthetic. And, while they are made of plastic, they still feel solid and premium. Above the number pad, you're going to find an OLED display, a volume wheel that you can click into mute, and a media key which will play slash pause your music by default. This OLED display will allow you to set a custom image, or even a GIF, further boosting the customization of this keyboard.